Network Security is the second week. It's Tuesday. That would be the third day. <clears throat> Talk about cyber defense. We met briefly today. They're going to meet again on Thursday. Spent most of the day talking about branch connections, WANs, we talked about remote access, ISPs, service providers, PPP over Ethernet, virtual private networks, we talked about GRE tunnels, we did not talk about BGP, we'll have to do that on Thursday. The labs, we finished up CHAP, PAP. Authentication, we actually just did chat. GRE tunnel, they were um, supposed to have it configured up to making the tunnel. They should have that done. And we moved the other server. This is something I need to look up. Okay, we talked about access control list, standard list, where we just look at the source, extend it, where we look at a variety of things. It's called a list because you actually have a list, a listing of lines, and those lines either deny, well, they either deny or permit. And if, if it's not satisfied in a line, it goes to the next line of it. If, if it doesn't meet the criteria in that line, goes to the next line. And if it runs out of line, it's an implicit deny. It just drops the packet. Okay? So that's why it's called list. And it moves down through the list. So the order of the list is important. And we have a range of things we can compare to. So it takes the traffic that's moving and compares it to what you have in your, or what you have in your list. Okay, and we talked a little bit about um, you can either permit, you can deny, or you can expect, and you can expect it against a list to see if it fits anything in that list. So, access list standard, we just look at the source. Extend, extend it, we can look at the source, destination, the protocol. Okay, I already talked about a list. It moves from one to another until it either meets a list criteria, and then it's done. It does whatever it says. Either deny, inspect, or permit. If it reaches the end, we have an implicit deny. And then we apply it in or out typically to an interface or we can apply it to a VLAN and we'll take a look at some VLAN examples before the year's out. Broadband, the term broadband is used more generically to mean some kind of high-speed connection to the internet whether it be cable, DSL, maybe satellite, and so forth. Broadband, in the networking sense, represents all these different bands that can be represented on one media. Um, your cable television, you bring in cable TV shows, and you also move data through that line. Same thing with phone lines. If you have DSL, you can actually move data and voice through the same line on different frequencies. We have a broad band of frequencies. Okay. Point to point over Ethernet and VPNs. VPNs, we uh, start talking about GRE tunnels and we'll do an example of that on Thursday. Cable, head in, Cable modem terminal system, I believe that stands for. You could look it up. So we have a DC here, we have a DC here, have a cable modem at the other end, and we can send it across either fiber or there could also be copper. 
you know, some kind of wire in between there. They call that a hybrid. An amplifier is just used to take the signal and boost it if it's traveling long distance. And then we have these subscriber drops. For example, there's a cable that runs in our backyard and has a cable runs over the neighbors. They haven't buried it yet, so it's laying on the ground. And there's the buried cable that comes to our house, subscriber drops, are called the feeders. So that cable modem then connects to a, in a lot of cases, some kind of device like a, a little wireless router. It allows you to do Wi-Fi and connect Ethernet back to that device. Cable modem puts the signal here, right? DC, data communications equipment, data terminal equipment, data terminal equipment. And then they have some way of getting out to the providers, whether that's a satellite or through fiber or whatever. Digital subscriber line. We have um, plain old telephone service. And you can connect to a DSL modem, set it up for data or set it up for voice sends a signal here and it reaches a DSL multiplexer <clears throat> access multiplexer it takes all these DSL signals and puts them on the line to send to for example maybe the internet or wherever it's going internet in most cases there's a symmetric and asymmetric DSL. Asymmetric DSL. It has a, a large amount of download and a small amount of upload. And then there's different frequencies for those. And your phone would have a different frequency on the line. Symmetric DSL. Typically the up and the down are the same. And I don't know recently if you're running this, you have to have a separate phone line. So you'd have to set up two phone lines in your house. If you wanted to do that and you wanted you still wanted a landline. We talked a little bit about this term mode modulating, demodulating, and changing frequencies so you can have broadband. FM was a way in which we change frequencies. We had this frequency and then we increased the frequency. That's an AM, um, FM way of managing signals. And AM is you have this amplitude and then you increase the amplitude. Same frequency, but you increase the amplitude and you can distinguish them between radio stations, for example. Last thing we talked about was wireless. We have this metropolitan Wi-Fi, and they can play have a mesh of access points. And people can be in that area and connect to the network. It can be, um, typically, it can be free. Um, there might be some way to authenticate you or make you accountable for your usage of the network. Um, a lot of people are familiar with your cellular mobile way of connecting the internet. Usually, um, that plan is usually based on the quantity. Of the access. <clears throat> satellite. Literally sends signals to satellite back down. WiMAX, um, what I've read, um, not used as much, but that was a... Microwave technology, you can up to 30, at least it was, any around 30 miles, you can send that signal through the air. Not extremely expensive, you have a tower here and a tower here in your equipment. So you can have a plant here, another manufacturing plant here, and you can communicate between them. And that is it.